Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. This talk is on leadership. It is imperative that you do not do what so many do, and that is to by default equate the quality of leadership with position or job title. It is a common mistake today, and growing all the more common under the false flag of tolerance, as we hedge the truth or pander as an expected politically correct and worldly conditioned response. Speak truth to power, always. True leaders appreciate it, and why be concerned with what leadership pretenders think? Speak truth to power, always. Oh my, the word leader is an abundant supply. If everyone who claims to be a leader were represented as beans, we would have enough gas to power a large metropolis. Unfortunately, a true leader is more than an anointed label. How so? Lincoln explained it best. If you call the tail of a dog a leg, how many legs does a dog have? Four, Lincoln said. You see, you can label someone a leader, or someone can label themselves a leader, but the labeling does not change what they really are any more than words can change the tail of a dog into a leg. If people don't behave as a leader, they are not leaders, regardless of position, rank, or title. But you must not confuse leadership with so-called aggressive behavior. Pulling a knife in anger on someone, that is aggressive behavior. Telling someone what the truth is that they may not want to hear, but they must hear, that is not aggressive behavior. What it is, is one characteristic of a leader. Also, do not overbuy into the team concept. Teamwork as a substitute for leadership is as oversold as a college degree. Don't be suckered into consensus building when you must stand up and lead people, no matter what the odds in the room at the time. If you go into some battles with a team or herd mentality, you are doomed to fail, as the herd is not interested in one of its former peers moving up the authority ladder. The herd is not interested in an independent good idea. Go read Animal Farm and see for yourself how the herd reacts. Think of how a healthy immune system reacts to a foreign bacteria, and you will not be far from the mark. The group often labels the above messenger of truth as a loose cannon, absolute nonsense. The first sign an intelligent person is on the trail of truth is when they attract labeling. Labeling someone is an easy method of isolation and dismissal of that person. The second sign is when herd members use the specific loose cannon name. Use of this particular label betrays the insecurity within others. Rather than step up and address an issue of disagreement, members of the herd redirect their collective limited energy away from the truth, ironically in actual protection of the dysfunctional leader by slapping the messenger of truth with a label. Watch out for Joe, he's a loose cannon. Predictably, the herd runs from the loose cannoneer. The issue goes away. Why? Because Joe quits. Joe gives up. The wrong guys win again. But when I hear the loose cannon or equivalent label spoken, I go talk to those so labeled and make up my own mind. More often than not, they are right on target and worthy of support. To take the path of leadership is a tough road to walk. Leadership is a gift, and God rationed it. 
But this makes sense, as a tribe of chiefs would never work. As stated, there is no shortage of pretenders. In the same manner that everyone who knows the alphabet considers themselves a writer, anyone assuming authority might assume themselves to be a leader. But it doesn't work that way. You will find that titles and true leadership are talents that rarely coincide. Leadership is a gift from God. That is to say, the ability to lead adult men and women is a gift from God, separate and apart from who may claim to have it. It is a real gift, something tangible and manifestly obvious in the person. It is not simply a claim to a gift. It is. What follows from that belief? This is what follows. By the same token, Babe Ruth was gifted to play baseball, Hemingway gifted to write, and many others gifted to do whatever they do. There are those in this world gifted in this way, to lead. Note that I do not select Ruth or Hemingway because they are well known. Fame and talent do not necessarily follow one another, and even when connected, are irrelevant to this discussion. I do not pick them because I think of them as leaders of men and women. I pick them solely to illustrate the rarity of some gifts given by God. Specifically, it is my premise that those with the talent to truly lead men and women are as rare in this world as Ruth and Hemingway are in their respective fields. That the average person would not necessarily see it that way has more to do with the ease at which people can delude themselves than truth and reality. It is easy to imagine famous personages as leaders, but it is rarely true, precisely because the gift of leadership itself is rare. You see, there is no shortage of people who think they can lead or try to lead in the same manner that many people who simply know the alphabet consider themselves to be writers and attempt to write professionally. The key to answering, are things as you say, is in judging the barrier for entry. In many cases, in many topics, if you can name it, you can claim it. When the weighted barrier for entry is low, you better beware what follows. Notice the barrier for entry into the Ruth Home Rudd Club is not only high, but tangible. The ball either goes over the fence or it doesn't. Sadly, no such instantly tangible barrier for entry exists to those who claim the title leader. In this case, if you can name it, you can claim it. Is there really any more need to waste electrons explaining what happens when bad leaders come into holding positions of power and authority? As such, there are plenty of people in this world who are convinced of their leadership talents, but it is a contextual misunderstanding of the word leadership. Once the claimed leader thinks in context and or meets people with true leadership ability, one hopes they look in the mirror and reality sets in. That person over there is the real leader of men and women. I just thought I was. When hopes for the good of all parties, their leadership masquerade is over quickly. Unfortunately, we live in the real world and that's not how it works. People do cling to the notion they are leaders. People do fail to step aside and to become obstacles for the doers and the true leaders. St. James said it this way, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his own face in the mirror. He sees himself, then goes off and promptly forgets what he looked like. That's chapter 1, verses 23 and 24. What do I do in such cases? What I do is hold up mirrors. I ask people to reflect on their talents as they are, not as they wish them to be. Why? To be a jerk? No, to illustrate to people they are living a dream at the expense of others. 
to illustrate to people they are not what they claim to be, a leader, and they don't know how to do what they claim to do, to lead. I have found this especially true in volunteer, no-pay organizations, where long ago nobody wanted a particularly important but thankless job in the first place. As the organization matures and issues become more complex than who brings the pot luck, suddenly the issues outstrip the talent of the current batter to hit the ball. When more talent finally decides to step forward, it is predictably not embraced for several reasons, including a where the heck were you X number of years ago when we needed somebody to do Y and Z for the organization, and a this is how we've always done it mentality. I've lost count of how many times and places I've worked with a mop in my hands and my mouth shut. Do I know how to follow? Sure I do. Do I know when to follow? Again, sure I do. But oh, how I wish others in leadership today would now look in the mirror and realize it is time to step aside when demonstrably better leadership talent appears. Thank people for their current service? Absolutely. But when it is time for them to now follow, follow or get out of the way, do not become an obstacle. Subjugate your ego. Realize you were where you were for a reason, and you serve God well. But that original reason has gone away, and now it is time to step aside. Now, if you can not come to accept the above premise on leadership exactly as I wrote it, without disclaimers, a string of exceptions, and further clarification, etc., there is no need for you to continue listening. Why? Because everything else I have to say will flow from the above beliefs that, number one, leadership is a distinct gift from God, and number two, that you have it, and number three, most other people don't. In summary, all of the above is easily attacked. People will undoubtedly feel threatened by this message, not to mention the messenger. You can foresee the comments. This guy is really arrogant. He doesn't know what he's talking about, and so forth. Of course, labeling a person is the easiest way to dismiss them. Such commentators simply expose their own insecurity. But that's fine with me. I'll let my record speak for itself. When it comes to placing the right people in the right place, Steve Jobs said it best, A people hire A people, B people hire C people. In my life, B and C have at times marginalized me. It was not fun for me, and I don't suspect it will be fun for you. But since when has fun been a mandatory ingredient of the truth? Have you noticed there is a call to individual leadership within the Bible, and the call follows a consistent pattern? Time after time in the Bible, God lifts up one person rather than a crowd to lead his people. When God created a nation of his own, he did not call upon the masses to do it. He rose up one leader, Abraham. When God wanted to deliver his people out of Egypt, he didn't appoint a committee to guide them. He rose up one leader, Moses. When it came time for God's people to cross into the promised land, they followed the leadership of one man, Joshua. Every time God has an important task to be completed, he calls a single leader to step forward, not a group. If that was the pattern of God before today, should it be any different today? Although it should not be any different, Unfortunately, some people think it is. Why? One of the things that have changed since the age of Abraham, Moses, and Joshua is our tendency today towards tolerance. Unfortunately, tolerance can paralyze leaders. Why lead people? Just invoke tolerance, and anything becomes normalized in society. And I mean anything. And, if, and what if Moses had been just tolerant enough to hang around Egypt? Do you get the picture? Is it reasonable to think God has changed his call for individual leadership today? 
I don't think so. In a difficult situation, is it reasonable to believe God no longer rises up some individuals to lead his people? I don't think so. Do you see any signs that God now prefers leadership by mob or popular opinion as expressed through the media? I don't think so. So why have we today drifted towards tolerance? Because we have drifted towards mediocrity, which is the precursor to tolerance. Cardinal Gibbons, who when consecrated was the youngest bishop in the world, and at his death in 1921 was the oldest, had mediocrity nailed long ago. Cardinal Gibbons said, The higher men climb, the longer their working day, and any young man with a streak of idleness in him may better wake up his mind at the beginning that mediocrity will be his lot. There are no office hours for leaders. We already have the gospel message. We don't need a new message. What we need immediately are more of the no exception, no excuse leaders God has created to step forward and lead, first in their own household, as examples within their own family, and then beyond. Why this sense of urgency for leaders to step forward today? This is why. First they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for the communists, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. That was a homily given in 1938 by Pastor Namoller. What is today's version of Pastor Namoller's homily? First they came for the unborn, and I did not speak out because I was already born. Then they came for the infirm and elderly, and I did not speak out because I was of good health. Then they came for prayer in the schools, and I did not speak out because I was not in school. Then they came for all God's truth, and I did not speak out because I was too busy. Then they came for my eternal soul, and there was no one left but the tolerant. We hope you enjoyed the program, and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.